Sonia. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that haven't been here before, welcome. We've been having a lot of new subscribers lately, so welcome. This week, I am bringing you three Crock-Pot meals. I know it's fall, we're busy, We some of us are back at sports, some of us are going to school back at school, and some of us are doing online. My daughter's online, and we've had a ton of homework. I feel like I'm helping with homework. I look up the time like, oh, it's dinner time. So I'm trying to get myself together, pre-plan all my meals. And I love crock pot. You just drop it in. Boom. Dinner's done. So I'm bringing three really good crock pot meals. One of them is one of my husband's favorite meals, which you might find surprising because he is part Italian. Wait till you see what it is. And he will tell you himself. He loves it. It's one of his favorite meals that I make for him. Um, so yeah, come along with us and I will show you what I'm up to this week in my kitchen. Okay, for our first recipe, we are making pork carnitas. You're gonna need to need a pork butt or shoulder, basically the same thing. You're gonna throw it into your crock pot. You're gonna take some chicken bouillon, about two tablespoons, throw it on top, put in about two cups of water or so, and turn it on. It's gonna take about, I don't know, probably more like six hours. I said four on that, but it actually took a little longer to fall apart. And this is how you'll know it's ready is when it, you open your crock pot and it is falling apart. It's kind of like the same thing that you would go eat at Chipotle. But we are, there it is, I pulled it out, drained it, and then I put a little bit of salt and pepper. True pork carnitas, unlike, let's say, Chipotle. Oh, and we are gonna serve it with onions and lettuce, or cilantro, whatever you want. You're gonna need to get your pan extremely hot, a little bit of oil, and then we are just gonna cook it until it gets nice and crispy. Now you could eat it the other way, more soft. Uh, my husband says shush, I'll make it crispy, but either way, you could use this in burritos and tacos. I served it tonight as a taco. Uh, you could use it on corn tortillas, but we are out. I actually thought I was going to use corn tortillas, but I didn't. So I used those. It turned out better. A low-carb wrap. And for my family, I cooked them off some uh, fresh organic tortillas that I picked up at Costco. And here it is. It's all ready to go, and it turned out so good. I want to let you know, if you have leftovers, leave it in the liquid, and you can just drop it in your freezer with the meat, and then boom, you can just reheat it uh, a little bit later. So now we're getting going our second recipe which is a soup it is a slow cooker chicken and wild rice soup you're going to need about one and a half pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast with a little bit of salt and pepper and we are going to just put in a liner into a crock pot or i like to for all these meals use a liner and then we are going to do six cups of chicken stock i just use the kind from costco the reason why I go to Costco around here is because our grocery stores where I happen to live are super pricey and that's part of the reason why I go. So we are just going to throw in uh, six cups of chicken broth and you could use any kind of crock pot you have. And by the way, I did not pay full price for this crock pot. I got it half off it. I think it was like, actually like a third of the price of what it is. I saw it online the other day. I was like, whoa, that's super expensive. That's not what I paid for it. So remember, Black Friday, get your deals. Then, after we have added our chicken stock, we are going to add one cup of wild rice. And then we're going to have three cloves of garlic mince. I just got that garlic chopper. Well, it's just like a little chopper. I've been loving it, by the way. I actually bought it for my daughter because uh, she's visually impaired, but I use it too. And then we're going to need one onion diced, three carrots peeled and diced, three stalks of celery diced. Um, we are going to do, I was going to do like a half a teaspoon of dried thyme and a half a teaspoon of dried rosemary, but I actually just found it all in one spice. So that's actually what I use. And then I'm going to add in two bay leaves. Make sure that you take your bay leaves out when you are done with this. I think I don't show that part, but you need to always get your bay leaves back out. You don't want to be eating those. And then we are going to put our top on and turn on our crock pot. This says it takes about 
six to eight hours. I am going to put all of the recipes down in the description box. Um, this one is from damndelicious.net that I found on Instagram, but it, I mean on Pinterest, but it really did turn out really good. I made it like twice before. All the other ones are my original recipes, by the way. Um, and so then it was cooked and this is the next part. You have to take the chicken out of the crock pot and you're going to need to shred it up. You could do this anyway with forks. Some people use like a small hand blender to really shred it. It in doing so you could, if you really wanted to just leave it and put it into like little cubes. The recipe says to shred it, but you could do it either way. I believe I think it would actually turn out good. Um, now I made it twice, uh, either way. And then once you shred it, you are going to add it back into your crock pot. And then at the same time, what you need to do to get ready is you're going to need about a pound of cremini mushrooms thinly sliced. You're supposed to put in the cremini mushrooms, you'll see me put them in a minute, um, about 30 minutes before your whole soup is done. And I think you would know that by checking your chicken. I mean, some of this you're just going to have to experiment with. And if you want a little longer as a crock pot meal, it's not going to make a huge difference. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put in my pound of cremini mushrooms. I did measure them out. Um, it probably doesn't need to be exact, but I did because I wanted to make sure and I wanted to make sure it all fit. I was worried about this is all going to fit in my crock pot or not. And there you go. And then I'm going to put the top on at the same time. Now we are going to be getting our little roux ready, which is going to thicken our sauce and make it super creamy. So in a saucepan, we are going to take our butter, which is a fourth a cup of salted butter and get it hot and melted. And you need to get it melted all the way. And then at the same time, you need to get a fourth a cup of all purpose flour and we are going to put it into a pot. Once we pour it in, you need to stir. And I mean really stir to get it all mixed together. You do not want to stop stirring at this part. This is the most important part. And then we're going to make sure it gets all thick and bubbly. And once it gets super thick, I want to show you what it looks like. It is really going to thicken up. At this point, you need to get ready one cup of milk. And I want to let you know, I did, you can do one cup of milk and one cup of half and half. If you want to make it lower calorie, you could do two cups of milk, even skim milk. It's not going to taste obviously quite as creamy, but it's still delicious and it would be much healthier. And so you're going to get it all together. Oh, and salt and pepper. Forgot about that part. You need to add your salt and pepper in, and then you're just going to stir it around and I got ahead of myself. And that's where you are going to put in your cup of milk and your cup of half and half. I hope you guys are enjoying these fall crock pot recipes and make sure if you guys have a suggestion for next month for Thanksgiving, leave it in the comments if there's something you want us to teach you for next month. As you guys know, my husband's a professional chef and Thanksgiving's coming. He um, has obviously taught me how to make a very good Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving is, if anybody knows me, my favorite holiday in the entire year. I love, love Thanksgiving. So here you are. So if you have something you want us to teach you, make sure you leave it down in the comments. I am stirring around my roux and putting a little salt and pepper because I tried it and I was like, no, it needs a little bit more. And so then I take it and I take our mixture to thicken up our soup. And this is what is going to make your soup thick. If for some reason you had a milk intolerance, I think you could have probably have eaten the soup without it, but this is what makes it creamy and good. Um, I actually use lactose free milk, by the way, and this for my son. So there you go. You could also do it that way. And then I stirred it around and then you were just going to let it cook down just a little bit. I then decided after it got all stirred around and I let it cook down that I wanted to give it a try to see what it tasted like. I think that's the other thing everybody needs to do before you obviously serve it to your family or to your guest is to make sure that you try your soup first. I tried it and I was like, you know what? 
it just doesn't taste as good as I think it should. I thought it didn't taste like a robust soup flavor, so I decided to add in a little bit of chicken bouillon. It's up to you, it's not part of the recipe or anything else, but sometimes it makes it a more full bodied soup. And there you go, that's how I had it. And then I served it with a little bit of parsley on top. And you guys, it was so good. You guys need to give it a try. And it is fairly healthy, especially if you don't do the half and half. It's a great crock pot meal. Okay, here we go. We are going to make my husband's favorite, one of his favorite things I make for him, which is my lasagna in the crock pot. I am using, you could use ground beef, lean ground beef, um, he and my son prefer sausage, so I use one hot and one lower fat Your hands one. only. Where are my jammies? I got you. I'm going to sell voiceover so I can say whatever I want. Yeah, I'm going to probably um, speed this up. You should see this, people. She's cooking naked. This one's a big sausage. Monterey cooking channel. The channel just exploded. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to do that on YouTube, are you? I don't know. If you don't know my husband, then you don't know that he is quite the jokester, and I had to share that with you. He's always constantly uh, cracking jokes while I'm cooking, by the way, and since a lot of times I either film myself or sometimes he helps me out, and today he was helping me out because, hello, I'm making his lasagna. Oh, okay. I'm starting out with eight cups of mozzarella. 32 ounces of ricotta and some Parmesan cheese. I want to let you know, depending on how big your crock pot is, is depending on how much filling you need. The last time I made filling, because I made so many layers in my crock pot, I didn't have enough. So this time I was like, I'm going to make a lot more filling. So I took about half of my bag and then I was like, well, I'm going to take about half of this ricotta, mix it together and just see how it looks to me and see if it comes together or it is. Now this, because you are doing your lasagna and your crock pot, you do not have to add an egg to it because the noodles give off a starch that actually hold it together. And I just use some, obviously, just regular uh, Parmesan cheese and I put in about a cup and then I am just going to mix it all together until it comes together. You just wanna mix and mix and mix and mix because you want it you know, thoroughly spread throughout the bowl. And then when I was getting to the point of like, okay, is this, you know, going to be good enough? I decided that it needed more. So I went ahead in and put in the entire container of ricotta, which I know is pretty, I don't know, a lot. But also I am doing a lot of layers. So then after it's all combined, I wanted to show you that I did cook off my pork and here it is and I'll show you the next steps. And again, you can use ground beef if that's what you like. Um, my boys like the sausage and I mostly make it for them. Um, and then also you could use whatever kind of spaghetti sauce that you would like to go into this. I find that we like one can one jar of ragu and we happen to have a Trader Joe's near us if you don't you could do again whatever you wanted and so I actually use one jar of their Arabiata sauce which is a little spicy which we like it kind of gives it a little bit of zing to our you know trozani but not too much that's why we cut it with one ragu now after you take your jars you're gonna pour both of them into your meat mixture that little bit that's left you are going to mix it with about probably like a cup of water and the bottom of each of one of these because we don't want it so thick we need the water to help boil those noodles that we are not going to be pre-cooking we are going to be actually using regular lasagna noodles they have those ones i think that are pre-cooked they're disgusting don't try them buy the regular lasagna noodles. You're gonna take a liner into your crock pot and then you're gonna liberally put down quite a bit of sauce because the next layer is going to be your pasta. And so you need quite a bit of sauce so it doesn't get stuck to the bottom. I didn't spray it. I think you probably could have sprayed it if you wanted to. And then all you're going to do is you're going to try to measure out, you know, depending on if you have a circle or if this one's kind of like a oblong kind of, uh, crock pot just trying to make them go across the best that you can and you are obviously going to have to break them now obviously 
you're not going to see that when you eat it because we're cutting them into pieces. So then you're going to take your regular Barilla lasagna noodles, whatever kind you want, and this is probably the hardest part of this whole meal, which is not really that hard, is to get to the ricotta cheese mixture to stick to it. And you want to make sure that you put enough so that you know there's a good bite of cheese in each layer all the way across evenly and so you've got to keep like working with the cheese use your hands and spread that mix out and so there i am trying to work it out you can put on a glove if you want to it's going to get cooked i had clean hands so it's all good so you just want to spread it all out there you go and then i'm going to go ahead and put it in my next layer which i'm going to go back in and put another layer of sauce and again you can do as many layers as you want i think i ended up with three or maybe four we'll find out here in a second and then i'm going to put my uh, noodles in and this this meal takes about four about four hours um in your crock pot by the way i forgot to tell you that and on the last one i also forgot to mention in the, the last soup one uh, you could have done it six hours or eight hours on low. But all these are kind of like, depending on if you put your crock pot or low or high. And I will show you that in the video. Or if you're looking, you'll see. I tried to show you all of me putting in the crock pot times, and I'll put it in the description box. So there I am putting in another layer of my ricotta. And I want to let you know, this is like surprisingly good. We actually serve it a lot of times, actually on Christmas Day, because my husband's Italian, and so for some reason he thinks that you should have lasagna on Christmas. And so I, it's great, because you could even get it in your crockpot liner inside your, even your crockpot the night before, put it in the fridge, the insert, and then pop it in the next morning. Like if you're going to church, going to work, whatever, put it together the night before, and then put it in your crock pot that morning so you just pop it in and go. So you, you know, if you have a busy day, it's great. Now I realize this is not the most healthy of my meals that I'm making, but it is delicious. And so we don't make it very often in our house. It's usually for Christmas or if they're just really craving it, they'll ask, Mom, please, you know, can you make me some lasagna? Or my husband's like, come on, Sonia, make me some lasagna and eat it. So here it is. So we're gonna just keep going with our layers. Um, and putting our ricotta in. And then we are gonna go ahead and put in our final layer of meat and pour it on all over the top of it. And then for our final thing, we're just gonna take some of that mozzarella that we had left in our bag and sprinkle it on top of it. And then we are going to turn there it is we're gonna sprinkle it on top and you could even add a little parmesan if you wanted i didn't but some people like it just like a little parmesan this is great with salad some bread yeah it's really good nice in the fall time and the most thing of course i love about crock pot is they are done and you don't have to cook right then so we're going to put our crock pot on i'm going to show you that i am going to put it on high for four hours if you were going to be gone all day you could probably put it on low for eight and the crazy part about this is, is that, I don't know, it gets kind of still like, looks like you baked it. It has a little bit of crispiness side. It did have a lot of oil. So we went ahead and got the oil off the top of my lasagna. You can still see the little crispiness of the side. And then my husband's going to show us how to cut our lasagna so that you can actually get it out in pretty pieces. So you're gonna take a cut on each side and then whatever spatula you are gonna use, you actually measure it so that when you shove your spatula in, it will actually get out in a pretty piece because if you make it too big or too small, it might not fit in for your first view to get it out. So you wanna measure it and then cut it and then you shove in your spatula or something. And then you put it onto a plate. And then I, on the plate, I added just a little bit more of sauce to make it pretty and add a little sauce to it. And I put just a little bit of parsley sprinkles on top. We ate it and it was delicious. Well, thank you guys and we'll see you next week.